grandparents. I miss my uncles. I miss my aunts. The investigators learned that Topalian had traveled the country repeating the story about his ancestors, raising millions of dollars to promote awareness of Armenia and its people's plight. He also took his case to Washington, lobbying Congress and top officials throughout the government. He was very successful, not only in gaining their sympathy and understanding, he had a hand in helping make Armenia one of the largest per capita recipients of U.S. foreign aid. We knew we were dealing with somebody that just wasn't your average guy off the streets. The man who Pete Elliott first thought was just a convenience store owner named Moose was turning out to be a man with friends in some very high places. Federal agent Pete Elliott has spent months searching for the person who left 100 pounds of volatile explosives in a small town storage locker. He's traced the lethal stash to a man who once owned a local convenience store. But digging deeper, Agent Elliott has learned the man whose nickname was Moose has some extraordinary connections to an underground terror network and to the nation's highest corridors of power. Here again, John Hockenberry. As Pete Elliott listened to that breakfast meeting between Murad Tapalian and his former wife Lucy, it became clear that Tapalian was a man with powerful connections. According to ATF transcripts of the conversation, Murad told Lucy he was supposed to be somewhere far more important than the Bob Evans restaurant in Cleveland. He said he was supposed to be in the White House that day. We started to find out who Murad Tapalian was that day. For instance, that Tapalian was no stranger to Bill Clinton's White House. He had visited the White House complex nearly two dozen times between 1993 and 1996, according to government records. He attended at least two gatherings with Mr. Clinton himself. At one meeting, he sat just one chair away from the president. Did you ever figure he was too big of a fish, that he'd get away, that he'd somehow undermine your efforts? This is a guy who visited the White House more than once. Right. A lot more than once. Right. I was concerned. I was definitely concerned. I was told by witnesses during this case that they, they were told by him that I was going to be transferred during this case, um, that there was no case against him, that this case was a farce and was not going to be going anywhere. Topalian's resume looked squeaky clean, above reproach. He was a lecturer at the State Department, someone who had testified before Congress, an upstanding vice president of a community college. But Pete Elliott was convinced there was another side to Murad Topalian. I'm seeing somebody saying to himself, you're coming down, buddy. I don't care how long it takes. If he's guilty, he's coming down, correct. Murad Topalian, a man with powerful allies, versus Pete Elliott, an unheralded middleman at the beleaguered ATF. But to Elliott, this was an opportunity. He would prove his own investigative skills and help repair the reputation of the ATF, stinging from high-profile debacles at Ruby Ridge and Waco. You made a vow that this case was not going to turn out like some others. Right. The last thing I wanted was to, you know, not prove this case and have the media and have everybody else looking at this thing and saying, well, the ATF should have never been involved. I haven't forgotten anything after uh, Waco happened and how low our morale was. But at this moment, in the fall of 96, you're, you're carrying the flag for the whole agency for, for a minute or two. I felt that way. It's amazing that all these objects here tell a story. Everything left behind something, some type of clue. But would those clues provide the answer to two key questions? Why would a prominent person like Murad